Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I got this makeup look right here. We have another fall, um, not vampy. It's not necessarily vampy. It's definitely on the more dramatic side. This was actually a recreation that I did of a client that I had over the weekend, and I posted the look on Insta Stories. So many people DM me and were like, bitch. I decided to just go ahead and recreate it in a tutorial, so that's what we're doing today. Before I even jump into the tutorial part, let's go ahead and just address the fact that I didn't even put up my final Halloween tutorial, and it just didn't work out. I tried to recreate the look like three times, and then when I finally filmed it like for the last time, I just didn't like it. It wasn't what I had in my head. It wasn't what I envisioned. It wasn't something that I was proud of. And I decided I just wasn't gonna put it up. I truly love Halloween. I just, I creatively, I was blocked. I was blocked. And I think I heard Nicole Guerrero say the same thing. I really look forward to her Halloween videos. She is just so creative. The things she comes up with are not even things that go off in my mind. But I think I remember her saying the same thing was that she was having a creative block and she had so many videos where she refilmed. And I feel like I was going through the same thing. Like it just wasn't happening and I'm not going to put up a video just for the sake of having a video. I want to put up something that I'm proud of. This particular look, it just... I wasn't proud of it, I didn't like it, so I decided not to put it up. And to be honest, I'm kinda happy Halloween is over because I just wanna go back to doing makeup. Halloween makeup is stressful, let's just say that. It's a lot of work, it takes mad talent. I give so many props to all the people who do special effects and bomb ass Halloween looks and it just wasn't me this year. So we'll try again next year, I'm sorry. It is what it is. Actually, while we're here in the intro, go ahead and leave me comments below of what you guys want to see. I'm interested to see if people want to see more makeup tutorials because I really enjoy doing makeup tutorials, but I feel like people aren't really into them anymore. Like, I feel like people just want to see reviews, and I'm happy to do reviews as well, but like, I love to do makeup tutorials and I love to teach. That's like really where my heart is, is creating looks and teaching people how to do beautiful makeup. But if you guys wanna see reviews, if you guys wanna see like anything other than makeup tutorials, just go ahead and leave it below. But I'm just curious to know like, what do you guys wanna see? I'm gonna stop rambling because I'm sure this intro is really long and I'm sure this video is gonna be long because I talk so much. So let's just go ahead and jump into the video. If you guys wanna see how I got this look, then just keep watching. You guys are really up close and personal. We're taking it there today. Please ignore my brows. I have been doing them lately where I kind of do the majority of the shape and I fill it in most like 98% and then I go back and do the very front of my brows after I'm done with my foundation. Since I like to do my brows first, I've noticed that sometimes when I go in with my sponge or my powder or something, I always end up wiping off the very front of my brows and I have to do them again anyway. So I've been doing this lately where I leave the very front part of it bare and then I just go back in and touch it up at the very end. It's like one of the last things that I do. So also they are so bushy. I think I did a pretty good job of concealing them. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but in person they're bad. I need to get them done this weekend, but I've been growing them in because I wanted to reshape them. So anyways, now that I've got my disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and start on the look. So I'm taking my soft ochre and I'm just going to use this to prime my lids, as per usual, I like to just use my hand. Usually I don't include this step in my videos, like I just put it in the description or I'll just say that I'm priming my eyes with soft ochre, but I kinda wanna take you guys like from start to finish, so that's what we're doing. My eyes are so unbelievably dry right now they are back to peeling again. I don't know what's going on with them. I think I need to look into switching eye creams. I've been using this one from e.l.f. I like it because it's really lightweight. I think it's just not enough for me. I think I might have to go back to the L'Oreal one I was using, but I can't find my backup. I think I mentioned that before. I love this one from L'Oreal. I can only get it on Amazon and I have two and I don't know where either of them are, but. Anyways, let's just go ahead and jump in. So I'm gonna be using the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Ring the Alarm palette. I know I used this in my last makeup tutorial, I'm pretty sure, and I know I've been using this a lot on my eyes lately, but I can't put it down. So I'm sorry, I'll try to use something else next time. I just love this palette. It is perfection, so I'm using it because I love it, but also I use this on 
my client that I had over the weekend and since I'm recreating that look I wanted to use all the same exact things that I used on him okay so first I'm gonna go in with the shade right here this is the shade alert it's this really nice like orange true orange color I'm taking this with my Sigma e40 and I'm just gonna start to build this in the crease can you guys see my gray hair? I feel like you can see my gray hair. I just started getting gray hair this year. It's like a new thing for me, but it's like once I notice it, I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's so depressing. Like truly, I feel like getting older is just making me so sad. Even though I know I'm not that old, I'm just like, what the hell is going on? So in case you haven't noticed, um, I have a mustache, I have bushy eyebrows, and I need my roots done desperately. I have been neglecting taking care of myself, but hopefully I'm gonna go I'm gonna go get my hair done this weekend and then hopefully get my eyebrows done this weekend and just kind of get myself back on track. I think once I kind of take care of some of these maintenance issues I'm having, I'll probably feel a little bit better about myself, I'm sure. Usually for the transition, I like to kind of just do these little tiny circular motions just to make sure that everything's blended and we have that nice base to start with. I'm gonna take that same brush and go in with this shade right here. This is the shade Rush. You can see it's just like a lighter version of Alert. Usually I would go in with the lighter transition and then build from there, but I don't know. This has just been something I've been doing lately. I just did it one day and I really liked the way it looked. Is I've been going in with a shade of a darker transition than what I usually would go in with. And I've been using that as my first color and then I've just been buffing out the edges with a lighter shade and that's just been working for me lately. I'm gonna go in with this shade next. Let me go ahead and show you guys. This one right here, it's this beautiful burnt brownie orange called Mugshot. I'm taking this with my Sigma E25 and I'm gonna raise my eye. I mentioned this in I think like all my tutorials. I like to raise my eye like that and kind of see where I wanna lay it down. And instead of blending, I'm gonna go in and pack this on first, and then I'll go ahead and start blending it out. This is my IBY crease brush. I've mentioned I like to use this to pack on color on the outer V. And for the outer V, I'm gonna use the shade right here. This one is the shade framed. It's like this kind of eggplant purpley brown. When you go in and blend the color, it blends away a lot of the pigment. So I actually like to go in pretty heavy with the outer V. I'm more careful with the placement um, rather than with the amount of pigment that I'm blending because when we go in and blend, we're going to lose some of that pigment. So I like to do a little more of like a precise application. I'm just going to soften line because it's pretty harsh. Run that up into the crease, kind of mesh it with everything else. It's not as dark as I want it to be since I blended it out, so I'm just going to apply a little bit more just to intensify. Just do a nice light little blend. I'm going to take my Too Faced glitter glue and I actually, since I started using the NYX one, well since I discovered it, I actually do like it a little bit more, but this is almost out. I've had this for so incredibly long and I just want to finish it off because I have a bunch of the NYX ones. I think I have like four or five. I just want to get rid of the Too Faced one to be honest. So I'm going to use this and I'm taking this little brush. This is a Morphe M421. You have to work kind of fast with the glitter glue. That's the only thing about it. So I like to go ahead and just lay down the initial glue. Like I'll do the shape since we're kind of doing a little bit of a more uh, cut crease. I'll kind of go up and just carve out the area that I want with the brush. And then I like to take my finger and use it to apply across the lid. I feel like it's just a lot easier to do. I don't have to deal with the brush. I'm using this pigment right here from Inglot. It is one of the most stunningly beautiful, amazing, perfect, unique pigments I've ever used. Let me go ahead and show you guys. A swatch I get compliments all the time whenever I wear this I'm obsessed with this it's one of my favorites I'm gonna take this brush from Morphe this is a M167 the nice thing about glitter glue is pigments will just grab exactly where the glue is it's kind of like a no fuss you know this is a 
BH Cosmetics V20. This is from uh, one of their vegan brush uh, sets that I bought a couple months ago and I'm going to take a little bit of the Outer V color framed. This brush is perfect for diffusing a harsh line between the lid and the Outer V and ever so gently I'm just going to diffuse that line and it's going to make it look like the pigment is just fading out into the Outer V. I'm just going to run it through the very front. I'm taking the Inglot gel liner. I haven't used this in like the hottest of hot minutes. I feel like I'm using a lot of Morphe brushes today. This is an M432. This is the one I actually like to use for my lower lash line. I like to use this for gel liner as well. And I think I mentioned I wanted to get another one and I keep forgetting to pick one up. So I just put a little bit of Duraline in here earlier. Um, if you guys don't know what Duraline is, it's a mixing medium. It is like the best creation of life. It revives pomades, uh, gel liners, anything cream. I even use it in my paint pot. It's like $11, I think. I've had mine for almost two years and it's still going strong and I use it like regularly. I'm not gonna do a wing or anything because I don't want it to take away from the eye makeup. So I'm just gonna do a line. A little bit thicker than what I would normally do, but that's okay because this is a dramatic look. I'm gonna take a little bit of mascara to prep for the falsies. This is one from Maybelline. It's called the Falsies Push Up Drama, and it's just okay. I actually don't really care for it, to be honest. I mean, it gets the job done, but I like the L'Oreal Voluminous better. I just have so many mascaras. Like, I feel like I get mascaras and every boxy charm that I have and I have so many from past like ipsy boxes and just I don't know why I get so many mascaras like I get so many of the mini samples and online orders and stuff that I haven't bought my L'Oreal Voluminous because I seriously probably have like 10 mascaras that I need to go through and there's no point for me to buy it when I have all those to use but I do miss it. I'm gonna take these lashes from Buku Lashes. These are in the shade Ms. Lovely. And I love these lashes. They are absolutely stunning. So I'm just gonna pop these on really quickly. I need to put my duo glue on here. I like the dark tone one. And this is the brush on applicator. If I'm gonna rush, I'll just sit here and blow on my lashes because I don't have time to wait for the glue to get tacky. I need it to be tacky now. I did prime my face. I used the Laura Mercier Radiance Primer on the outside and then the Too Faced Peach Primer in my T-zone just like I normally do. I went to Sephora over the weekend and I picked up a sample of the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Foundation. I've been wanting to try this foundation since it came out. I am very picky when it comes to foundation. Surprise, surprise. I'm picky about everything, but especially foundations because my skin's really weird and it's very finicky. I started to feel bad because I would always buy foundation foundations and return them because I didn't like them and then I felt guilty. I forgot that you could actually get samples of foundation. So I picked up a sample of this. I'm trying the shade Y305 and I'm going to test it out and see how I like it. I am on the hunt for a holy grail foundation. I decided that I want a holy grail foundation. I don't have one. I actually ordered a couple from Ulta and I'm gonna do um, reviews on them. But they're drugstore foundation, so if I could find a drugstore one, that would be actually exceptional. I think I wanna pick up the Estee Lauder one, the Double Wear. I used to be obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with that back in the day. I'm hoping that I'm gonna love it as much as I used to love it. I also used to love the Lancome one, the, can't remember, the Tinty Idol, I think. It was the one for oily skin. Um, and I went through like multiple bottles of that back in the day. I picked it up again one day like just because I wanted to try it again and I actually don't like it as much as I used to like it. So I hope that's not the case for Estee Lauder because I just remember that being like the best foundation I've ever used in my life. If you guys have any suggestions for me, please leave them below. I've tried a lot of foundations that have been out on the market, like drugstore and high-end, but I haven't really tried a lot of new ones that have come out. Let's just go ahead and move on to concealer. I'm going to take some shape tape and I'm still using these two shades. I really like them mixed together. This is light medium honey and light sand. I like this because it's 
peachy so I just do just a little dab right there to counteract and my bun is so tight right now that it is squeezing my head I have such a massive headache but I don't feel like undoing this bun because I secured my hair down so tight that it would stay out of my face and I refuse to undo it I also tried the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I actually heard that it was like the new shape tape, but I don't like it. It settles in my creases so bad. Even when I bake it, it just, it settles almost instantly and I can't seem to make it work for me. I gave it a really fair chance too. I tried it at least like, I wanna say like 10 or 15 times. I know I was using it for at least two weeks straight. If any of you guys have tried that concealer, I'm curious to know your thoughts if you like it. I don't know if that's only me or what, but I'm just not a fan. It's a wonder that I even love makeup as much as I do because I don't know, I'm just so particular. Like I expect things to be perfect and if they're not, I just don't like them and that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap out the creases before I set and I'm taking my Essence Bright Up Banana Powder. You guys know I'm still on this stuff like I'm still just so in love with it I can't stop using it and I'm gonna use that to set my concealer and I'm also gonna bring it down a little bit to kind of make me look a little more bright I'm gonna go for that more bright under eye effect since this is a more dramatic makeup look I'm gonna take the peach perfect powder from Too Faced I'm still absolutely loving this with my whole heart and soul it is like a joy that I found a mattifying powder that I love as much as I love this one. The weather's been really weird here. It's been freezing cold. By freezing cold, I mean it's been like in the 50s and 60s, which is cold in Texas. But then it'll go back up to like 85 degrees. So my skin's kind of freaking out right now. It doesn't know what to think. What I've been doing is taking like a very light amount, almost nothing on the center, like up here in my T-zone, my nose, I'll do around here where I get really oily. And then with whatever is left over, I've just been tapping on the outer parts of the face. I like to take this brush from BH, this is a V17. And I always use this to go in between my eyebrows because it just works so perfectly. I'll even just go right over my brows even though they're already done. It doesn't move anything, but it helps keep everything in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this powder to bake my under eyes. I just have been taking a little bit. What I've been doing is taking a little bit more and just doing a little extra baking on the sides of my nose. I never used to do this, but I've been into it lately. I've noticed the longevity of makeup in my T-zone just lasting so much longer. I'm taking butter bronzer, of course. This should be no surprise. And then this is my BH Cosmetics. This is the V11. I did a BH Cosmetic videos a couple months ago, I think. It might have even been a year ago at this point. I can't remember. But I had a couple of recent comments on that video of people asking me if I still love the brushes. And I do still love the brushes, especially the vegan ones. The Studio Pro brushes, I don't find myself reaching for them as much. But the vegan ones, I am just in love with them. I use them every single day almost. They have the sets when they're on sale for like under 10 bucks sometimes. If you can catch a sale, go ahead and pick them up because I promise you will not regret it. I'm not affiliated with them or anything whatsoever. They have no idea who I am, but I very strongly believe in those brushes. Like I'm obsessed with them if you can't tell. For contour, I'm gonna go in with my NYX Singles. I have it sitting here on my lap, so I'm not gonna hold it up and show you guys because I've talked about them a lot. I'm taking Toffee and Sculpt, and I'm taking the Sigma brush. This is the F06, and I'm gonna use this to just do a light little contour. I'm gonna go ahead and just dust away this powder. It's been on long enough. For blush, I'm gonna go in with this, and I've never used this before. I just got this over the weekend. This is the Sephora Collection Blush in Hot Flush. It reminded me of the Becca one that I love in I think it's called Blush Copper. Um, this is definitely a little more orangey than the Becca one, but I was like, uh, let me go ahead and try this out. It looked really pretty. I didn't know how it was gonna be because it looked really orangey in the pan. Bitch, that is a blush. I barely tapped my brush in here, and then I also tapped it off, and that's how much 
came off on my face. That's actually really pretty. I know sometimes my blush looks a little harsh in the camera. But I promise you it's not that harsh in person. It actually looks really pretty. Hmm. It's actually really pretty. I like it. And it's a shimmery blush. I love a shimmer blush. We are going to go in and do two highlights. I'm going to be a high maintenance bitch today. I'm going to take the Maybelline Molten Gold and the Nikki Tutorials highlight and I'm going to mix these two together. I'm really into doing this lately because now that my tan has officially pretty much Oh shit, I just stabbed a hole in it. Now that my tan has pretty much officially gone away, I am not a bronzed queen anymore, like I wanna be. Um, I can't really use these two. Like the Nikki one is a little too light and the Molten Gold is a little too dark. I actually only can really use this when I'm tan because it's a little too gold for me, but I have been mixing these two together and I love it. It's like the best of both worlds. By no means should you feel like you have to go out and buy these two highlighters to mix them together. But if you do have these two or if you don't mind buying the two highlighters or you like to play with makeup like I do, this combination is stunning. Just with whatever I have left over, I'm going right above the brow. I'm gonna do the chin. I actually like to go really heavy with the chin. I know, I know. It's too much sometimes, but I don't care because I love it. I think it looks so pretty. I used to hate highlighting my nose. My sister actually did my makeup when she was here visiting once. She was like, why don't you just do the bridge and then do the tip? And then just don't do anything in between. I was like, okay, that's cute. So I started doing it ever since she did my makeup that one day. I'm actually just gonna take that highlight and then just highlight my brow bone. I'm gonna also go ahead and hit the inner corner. I'm just here for a bright ass inner corner. I freaking love it. On my client, I actually didn't do anything on the lower lash line. He told me that he does not like product on his lower lash line at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing because I wanna recreate the look that I did on him. So I'm just gonna take mascara. I'm going to finish off my brows. I'm taking the Anastasia Brow Definer. I'm really into this lately. When this first came out, I remember thinking, who could ever do their brows with that? I finally bought it and it's life-changing. I just love the shape of it. It is ingenious. I know this came out years ago, but I never gave it a chance because I didn't think I would like it and now I'm obsessed with it. I'm just going to go ahead and finish off my face with this e.l.f. Hydrating coconut mist. I do like this mist. You can see I've used almost the entire bottle. To be 100% honest, I just like my Mario spray a lot better and I don't see myself repurchasing that. Until I find something that will beat my Mario spray, I think I'm done testing out facial sprays. Even though this is less expensive, I think this is only around like five or six dollars. There's just something about the Mario Badesco one that's still my favorite of all time. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do lips. I'm gonna take this liquid lipstick from Ofra. This is in the shade Verona. I'm just obsessed with this. I cannot stop using this liquid lip. It has just been my go-to lately. I don't know why, I love it. This is the completed look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and thank you so much for all your support and comments and kind, sweet comments on Instagram and YouTube. And just in general, I really appreciate you guys like even just watching any of my videos at all or even like just taking the time to comment on my videos. It is so appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe before you go and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos and I will see you in my next one.